Hi there. So this is going to be a process, meaning that I am starting off with what you see in front of you and very similar to the previous video of the overall setup here, but I'm starting to get more serious, let's put it that way. So after I start kind of thinking things out with this, then we'll start getting into code. So I'm highlighting a couple of things that you basically saw already. First is the helper functions. Now, you know what? Let me take it back. Let me go back to what I want. I want this first to be named odd index list values, and I'm going to be given a list, but I want a new list. That really makes a difference when it comes to what the hell I'm supposed to do, because there's going to be some examples where I want you to sum values in a list, you know, or, or multiply them, you know, double them, or something like that. You need to think of the functions that will actually be able to do that. So the function to create a new list is going to be a pens or con. I think it's con, but I got to watch for pens. They're very similar, and I got to double check my stuff here. And I'll do that when I get to my code. But that's really important because I need to know that the recursive call is going to have some type of feature that's going to collect one item from the list and then pass the rest of the items so it can recursively keep collecting items from there. So that's first. Now I go to the helper functions. Because of what I know what I want, I need either appends or cons. And I'm going to use null for checking to make sure that the list is not null. Um, CDDR, that's really actually customized because I'm skipping uh, the, the well uh, one element in the list for this one. You're going to use some type of CDR because remember, CDR returns the rest of the list for you, and you're going to need that in your next recursive call. Car to get the current element that you're you know looking at, definitely going to need that in there. And then list with question mark to see if it's actually list is more of a validation thing, anything else like that. And then con, you know, because I have so many conditions in there, certainly I could do it in an if else. But frankly, I don't want to do the work, and neither do you. So that's why I'm going to use cons for that. So let me go through the call stack and the value stack and the notes. You know, the most important part, again, is to know what you're actually supposed to be returning. And I'm supposed to be returning a brand new list. Cons is the one that actually creates new lists, usually element by element, or I could do element by another list. So with that thought in the back of my head here, I'm drawing out my call stack and my value stack. So I know the OILV is just old, or old, huh, odd index list value. I just shortened it. And then I know I'm going to put in my, my example array in there. So I really want to get the number one from that. So that's really easy. I'm going to do the car D list to get the number one at the current value of that size of list. And then I got to return the rest of the list. Now, I'm using cons here because... There's going to be two parts of this. The cons and the car D list portion that's being highlighted right now, that's a given. It's going to give me one element. But I need the other items from the other, well, calls that are going to be virtually built in this as we're doing our recursive stack and call stack. So that's why you'll see me do an equal sign after that to kind of show exactly what it should look like. So it should look like cons of car, the D list, which is really, I can replace that with the one, and then the rest of the list. Now, that's not how you actually call it in your code, but again, I want you to visibly understand what's going on behind the scenes. So by the way, I might have a mistake in here, but I'm at least trying to formulate it out, and then you'll see them when we get to the code from there. So you also notice my notes, I have a cons add an item to a list and CDDR to skip. And comment on everything as you're designing this out. Do not leave anything for chance, especially if you're working with other people. Comment everything. So from there on out, it should start to get a little <laughs> easier. Because again, actually the most important call is that first one to make sure it's really going to do exactly what you want it to do. Because now if we move up to our next call stack, it should have the list is reduced. I should be able to do the same thing with that particular list. Get the cons of the car, the first item in the list, so that's going to be three this time, and then pass the rest of the list so I can get the next item in the list. And that should continue. Where you need to worry about things is when we start getting close to the end. 
Now remember, one big thing in lists and scheme is that if I do CDDR and that's beyond the scope of the array or of the list, it'll blow up. So you need to do some checks to make sure that, frankly, it hasn't gone too far. So that null would probably not be a bad idea. Um, there also might be a length function. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, there is a length function. So might need to be used. So notice I'm adding to my own notes right here. And that's fine to be used. I bet you you're going to have null and length, or both, could probably gonna be used in most of the experience that you're going to have for your coded problems here. So anyway, um, matter of fact, I even left another note, might still need to be an issue with two elements. Yeah, because remember, I'm skipping some, so i got to be very, very careful about this. So that's one spot I'm going to have to worry about. Again, I want you to understand, as soon as I start getting things done and I finally reach my base case, it's going to be a really long, you know, it's going to look like a really long cons command that's going to be over and over and over cons with getting certain pieces of elements into the list. That's how recursion works out, but our design is the most important part first. And now on to the code. So here's the starting of my code. All I'm doing is putting in comments, exact same thing as I would have had, frankly, in my spreadsheet here are the functions possibly needed I went ahead and commented more of that out really that's meant for you you certainly don't have to do that but there's my pens or cons I'm not sure yet the null C A D D C D D R car all that's the same so nothing really new here but it's important for you to look at to see where my my methods are here next I put in well I'm starting the function I am a define D list I named all that already from what you've seen from my notes but I did put something in there that I'm probably going to use a little bit later on, and that's debugging prints. I'm, I know that my list should end up changing sizes each time, because remember, in recursion, every time we call a recursive function, something needs to change that we know eventually will end. And as you see from my graph, eventually the size of the list is going to shrink. So I need to make sure that it is doing that. Let's put it that way. Now, I'm putting that there for now, but when you are working on stuff you're welcome to use it until the end when you've gotten everything done then go ahead and comment those out but at least want to show you that addition so now what you see is i'm taking care of the base cases now a couple of base cases just for validation like if it's not a list you see it being highlighted right now I, I return nothing actually to be honest i'm returning a false there but i am looking for if it happens to be a null list what do i do i make sure i return an empty list um, and then you see me and we talked about this before if I get down to one element in the list I'm done so I had to be very careful about that and notice right now I'm, I'm undecided between two functions I'm gonna see how this works out notice where all the parentheses have to be length there was a function called length I forgot about it and, and remembered as we were talking if the length for the list happens to be one then we go ahead and we are going to return something in either case I'm doing a car of the D list or I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same the car with D list but then turn it into a list because they're gonna remember cons works with an element and then adding a list behind it so I gotta be really really careful that I, I keep working with that so so again it's a lot behind the scenes here so that's I took care of the base cases all right now I'm worried about the recursive call I've done the base cases I gotta worry about two things I gotta worry about how I'm collecting the data what I have to do with the data and then the recursive call for that which again I'm getting really from the chart that I already did so again, I, I don't know yet on which one's going to be a pens or cons. We'll find out here in a little bit. Uh, but notice the overall commands look basically the same. It's just again, I got to worry about you know with the cons, I got to worry about the back, uh, the ending parameter being a, with the list. A pens, I got to make sure that it works correctly with stuff. So I think a pens is going to work, but we'll find out. So. That's how this is going to work out for this. You don't have to do this this way, you know, come up with two different statements. You can try one and battle with it and go from there. That's probably what you're likely going to do. But again, I just have two thoughts on my head and I'm putting them out and again, showing you the overall process. So let me see what I can do from here. So I forgot one item. And that's to actually start, well, kind of testing things out. 
I'm going to frankly make things easy on myself. I'm not creating a main or anything else like that. I'm going to put in a display hello in there just to make sure that the darn script is running. And then if something blows up after that, at least it'll say hello. The new lines are a good idea after that because otherwise it starts getting kind of ugly to see when it's on a command line. So leave the new lines in there. And then you'll notice I'm testing out the base cases really first with the crap that should really blow up that it's not really a list. Uh, the other one's an empty list, so it should have something that comes up with that. And then I actually have one example of a call that should work out. So that's another addition you should have. I'm going to start testing things here. So I wanted to go, I know I've got this in my set of videos somewhere, but I just want to double check here. Is that you can do a duplicate session and then you're in the other window. Let me put my password in here. And then you can actually do a dual screen of your putty screen here, no matter the server here, the server is going to be different for you. But anyway, so now i got two windows. One's my Emacs stuff, and one is going to be my other window here that I'm going to run from. So Racket, T, there we go, and I'm going to run it, and okay. So this ran, and I got lucky with a couple of things. I had a couple of suggestions, and I went back and forth on a couple of things here. So notice my output here. Number one, there's a hello, just to make sure the darn script ran. Notice I tried with crap and it returned a false. It gave an empty set of uh, lists. Give me an said here. It also went through with a little bit more when it needed to. So things worked out all right when it came to this. So I want you to look back at the code here. There's a couple things that I commented out and had to go back and forth on and which one worked out. There was a couple things that I learned from this. Let me scroll down in here because I put them in here. I had a couple of errors as I was going through here. One was um, went too far. We had a contract validation, and it was given a 7, and I was trying to do a CDDR on the 7. So it went too far in that issue. So that was a CDDR contract violation. If you see that, it went too far on that. Probably CDR would do the same thing, depending on your exercise as well, so heads up on that. Now, the other interesting part, and this is where I really thought a pen was going to do it, but it really didn't end up that way. I had to use cons. A pen is expecting two lists. So remember, I'm pulling one item out. I'm not pulling a list out and then sending the rest of the list. So a pens did not like me because it says, hey, I'm expecting two items and they both need to be at least a list. And they weren't. One item was an element or an atom. The other one was a list. So I had to really go back and forth on it. And notice what it was expecting. It was expecting a list, and I was only pulling one atom out of it and trying to combine it. So that's really right here where I tried to, you know, I tried to massage it with the list. It didn't want to work with that either. So I went back with my cons and the idea and happened to magically work. So I'm hoping this helps you out. Please let me know if it does or doesn't, and we'll go from there. But I'm hoping that you'll use the structure of the overall design and the overall setup and the overall run of what we're doing for our big exercises in recursion and lists.